All right, I am recording. And I'm just going to see, so we have Lisa's here, Barchin, that's who we're missing, I think. Suzanne, Barchin. So I think we'll wait just like two minutes and see if they come, a few minutes and see if they come. Katrina, how you doing? I'm ready for school to be out. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I agree. Did you get that last text? Did you get that last text I sent you? Yes. Yeah. So sorry. Side. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I hope, know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it won't be true, or it would just be for the fall. But. Yeah. Uh, I know that some of the other like micro instructors have lost their lab techs already. Which yeah. makes a dent in us like trying to develop take home lab kits and stuff because I'm not going to be cooking up all that stuff. I don't have time. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll it'll definitely change yeah. change our days. Yeah. Yeah, like who's going to take care of everything else that's up at the lab either? <laughs> Looks like I'll be going in every week to check on cadaver and then send ever. Carl. Yeah, the animals. Yep. Yeah. If in case you don't know, Katrina and I work at the same place. <laughs> and we're afraid we're gonna we're afraid our lab tech's gonna get laid off. We're no. rumors, so Yeah, I mean there something's gonna happen for sure. We just don't know what the extent. Our lab tech just quit up in Centralia. Well, ours is not planning on quitting, but mm -hmm. we're not sure. We're hoping to rehire, but just starting the process. Even though we're online, ours is still busy doing things. You know, I mean, there was still. Oh, yeah. There's definitely work to do. So we shall. Okay, well, Merchant's not here, but I think we'll just get started and so we don't go long or anything. Um, okay, so I have, I'm Bobby. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've met most of you. I've been in a couple meetings with some of you, but um, I just have a short agenda. The first item's introduction, so I'll start and then we can go around. I know you all probably know each other, but since I don't know you, that would be helpful for me if you just tell me quick who you are. Uh, I work at Wenatchee Valley College, so I do natural resources and biology, and then I'm the retention coordinator for the MESA program, which is the Math Engineering Science Achievement, um, which is for underrepresented groups in STEM. And this is my last year doing that. I started that program with Karina Vegavia, um, so it will be three years in, and so from when we started building it. And before that, I worked for CAMP, which is the College Assistant Migrant Program as their STEM specialist. Um, so I've been working on a lot of this, like bringing what you learn when you work in programs like that over to teaching, right? Um, and so, which is kind of a lot of what we're trying to do here, which we'll talk about today. Um, and so, if you can just tell me who you are, or and you want to share? Oh, Barton's here. Hold on. Hi, welcome. Hello. Uh, we're just doing quick introductions since I don't know mostly everyone. Um, and so I'm just going to go in order of who's on my screen, if that's okay. So Katrina, can you just introduce yourself real quickly? Hi, so I teach at Lower Columbia College. And mostly I teach microbiology, but also like every other biology course at some point in time. Um, I'm also the um, pathway lead for our STEM pathway and guided pathway. So we've been working on that this past couple of years. And yeah, that's, oh, I, I've also taught online for quite a while. Thank you. Uh, Lisa? Hi, I'm from Centralia College. Uh, I teach. Um, 
the black half of majors biology, so ecology, evolution, diversity. I'm really a plant ecologist by training. Um, I teach a lot of environmental science, and I've been doing those courses online for a number of years, but, but not the other um, parts of my teaching. So I teach a few botany courses also. Uh, I've been on sabbatical for the last couple quarters, um, so I haven't been in the throes of hurry up quick, teach online, but I have been, uh, as part of my, my sabbatical, I was already working on developing more online content for converting a couple of courses to being fully online, including one I haven't started, but um, Intro to Natural Resources is one of mine too. So maybe Bobby, I could talk with you about is Lisa frozen or is it just me? I think she's frozen. Sorry. <laughs> so you can try to turn off the video. Sometimes. You can move on. Sorry. Well, I got all the way until the natural resources, so that's good. And I will connect with you. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, can you? Hi, everyone. My name is Suzanne Schlater, and I teach at North Seattle College. I teach primarily microbiology, but I've also taught genetics and anatomy and physiology. And then sometimes I step in and do the introductory biology for non-majors, and so nice to meet you all. Thank you. Uh, Barchin? Um, my name is Barchin Akar, and um, I am teaching at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Um, primarily, I'm teaching microbiology, but uh, also anatomy, physiology, and uh, general biology. And then occasionally, every once in a you know, once a year or so, I have some outside courses that I teach as well for uh, one for public health, one for uh, funeral services. Thanks. Um, and then Bryce. Hi there. Yeah, so my name is Bryce Batisti. Uh, I've been teaching biology for about 15 years at all different places at four year colleges and universities and online colleges and in person. I've been in the community and technical college system here in Washington State for the last seven or eight years, nine years maybe, and um, teach a lot of online classes. So I'm not new to that. And um, this quarter I'm actually teaching at Pierce College, Clover Park, and Bates Technical College and doing um, a couple different versions of general biology. Well, thank you, all of you. I'm really excited to work with you um, as the faculty leads. And so I have just a short agenda. I'm going to share it so we can look at it. I call it the agenutes because I just typed the minutes right into my agenda. <laughs> um, but I'll just put it up so we can look at it. Okay. Um, and so first, before our kind of main goal for today is to plan forward um, and kind of see where you're at and plan forward. But um, before we do that, I think to make sure we have enough time, I want to see if any of you have issues or concerns right now that we need to talk about first since we're all together. Um, I don't want to lose this chance to do that. So how is it going? Well, I'll jump in first. This is Bryce. Um, my only thing, I'm not, I'm not certain yet that I can do it. I, uh, at Bates, I asked if, if the grant funding from SBCTC, you know, if that would come through for me, because I've had some funding problems through Bates before. And basically, I was told by my dean, yeah, you should probably go through a different college. We don't even have a director of finance right now. So, 
So I asked uh, Pierce and the Dean is looking into it and I haven't heard back. So I guess we'll see. I'm, um, you know, I'd love to just do it out of the kindness of my heart, but I also need to get paid. So kind of waiting to hear back about that. Okay. Okay, we can follow up. That's probably, um, Lucas, you might have some. Yep, and Bryce, have you mentioned that to Bill or Jen? Yeah, yeah, I've talked oh. to them about it. Okay, I'll just check in there and make sure we're, see if we can communicate with Pierce too and get this going for you. Okay, thanks. Um, anybody else? Have anything, issues or concerns? Or you can go like this if you don't and then I'll know. Suzanne, how's it going for you? You're muted, you're muted. Ah. Okay, I haven't ever unmuted myself on the sidebar, so that was new. And my internet seems to be slow. <laughs> Um, I, the only, the only concerns I have is trying to implement adding some hands-on labs to the micro program. And I'm worried that I will not receive support from, uh, lab directors and people on campus that, that are trying to help me determine if this is a safe thing to do. So, okay. Okay, we'll talk about, we're gonna talk about labs. So do you have some ideas already and you, or you're trying to develop them and make sure they're safe? Uh, I have some ideas and have, was working with some faculty at Highline College to expand on a few labs that they tried this quarter that um, get the feedback from those labs and then continue to build with their model of using some basic resources, like basically food science, food microbiology. And I haven't had a time, I haven't had time to, to fully vet my proposal with our lab support staff and personnel, director, et cetera. And I'm just nervous that we may not be allowed to do that. And that's, that's where I'm at. Okay. And Barton, Katrina gave me a thumbs up. Are you okay? Do you have concerns? Okay. All right. Um, Actually, okay. now that Suzanne brought that up, um, we're not certain how much support we're going to have with a lab tech. We've always had a lab tech for our biology lab, so who does all our prep and everything. So if we're doing take home lab kits and we no longer have a lab tech, then that's going to be an issue for just having the time to put those kits together as an instructor and with no lab tech to help. Yeah, and probably not sure how that's, we're, we're gonna know probably in the next week or so how okay. that's gonna pan out for next fall. Okay. Um, okay, so I think these are all like pretty serious concerns and they feel like problems I have no idea how to solve. So we're, we're starting off on a, on a good note here. So that's great. <laughs> uh, but I hope like some of this, like Suzanne with yours, if we find something like even if another school, maybe, a, you know, approval through some other school precedent, we can kind of use that, right? Like, um, so I'm hoping and Katrina, maybe we can come up with some replacements if you have no lab tech, right? So um, um, I'm hopeful that we can solve this. Bryce, your problem is so far beyond me, but it sounds like Lucas had some idea. Jen will help you. So, um, okay. So the most pressing sort of like thing that we have right now is making sure that we have facilitators for the rest of the, the meetings through, um, they're scheduled through the end of July, I think. Lucas probably knows for sure, but that's um, what my memory is telling me right now. Um, and so I was just marking down, it sounds like most of you, well, three of you are micro. Um, so just trying to get these, like if we can figure out who wants to facilitate and then what we can't cover, I can fill in or Lucas or we can figure it out. 
Um, so if you've been facilitating and you're going to continue, um, let's talk about that because we'll just mark those. Um, the COPs we have are micro gen 160. I'm trying to remember all these. So how about if you tell me what you've been facilitating, then I won't have to remember. <laughs> that would be better. I've only been participating in the micro ones, so that's the only one I'm aware of. Okay. Have you facilitated at all or just been participating? Not yet. This is Lisa. I haven't yet, but I'm... Uh... Okay. Yes, Bobby. Most, yeah. of, most of the meetings have been facilitated by Jen or I, um, Alyssa, when Jen or I couldn't be there. So it'll be kind of a handoff to everybody. Katrina has stepped in and, and helped a little bit as well. She was helped facilitate the AMP one the other day with Alyssa. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where we're at there. Okay. Um, go ahead. Could you have more? Um, so is it easier? We can, I thought, I kind of thought it was the other, so that's helpful. I thought you had already been doing this and it was just like going to be some gaps. Um, we can do it now or if it's easier after we get done today, I can just put it out on a document like a Google doc and you can go sign up. I can go put the time, the date and the COP and then you could sign up if you want to do it that way. Or what do you think? I think it might be a, better to do it that way so people can refer to their schedules and I won't commit myself twice before I really know what's happening. <laughs> okay, I'll send that out. I'll work that up and send it out. Cause also like just managing calendars right now is like, if someone asks me right now to schedule a meeting, it's really hard, right? So, okay, I can do that. Um, is everyone comfortable facilitating? If I have a reason and an agenda and I know what I'm going to follow, like, like we did that, what was it, lean coffee thing the other day, and then I did it, I could do that in AP, but I'm not, that's not my strong suit, like, unless I really know, have a um, real agenda for the meeting. Otherwise, I'm not that good about, like, just drawing things out of people if I don't have some real concrete thing that I need to be working on. Okay. Yeah, I think the lean, the lean copy is like super helpful, um, which kind of brings us to the next piece. Um, it's a little out of order, but sort of right now we're kind of at the point, it seems to me that most of these have been, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's sort of like people coming together and talking about like what's happening right now and kind of like surviving and like making it through, right? And what we're looking to do, hopefully, and at some rate, right? This could be different for every group depending on where you're at, but sort of transitioning from that into um, getting some deliverables, getting some objectives, talking about equity, right? Transitioning away from just like, how are we gonna make it through this week? What do you have to help me for this week? Um, I think you can still use lean, the lean coffee model for that because it just makes facilitation like more driven by the group, but we could work together to to get some categorical stuff in there too, if we need to, or set one of the things, um, just kind of depending on how you want to do it too, because you're in charge. Um, so we need to decide sort of as the group for biology, kind of what our goals are. And that's what I have here. So you all have 40 hours, but it's not, it's deliverables, right? But you have to produce those deliverables within those hours. And that's to, all the way to the end of fall. So it's, that's not a huge amount. Um, one thing I did do is I made a survey and I'm gonna get the link if I can. Um, okay, I will send the link in just a second. I will find it. Um, and so this was, I saw this from chemistry. Um, they had sent it out. And so we, we could share this to all the faculty that are participating. Um, and it basically just asks like, what has been valuable for you? What do you wanna continue to do? And then what people's like, how available are they for spring, for summer, right? Um, so I'll get the link, I'll put it in the chat. I don't even know if I can chat. 
Um, Lucas, can you, do you have the link I emailed you? You're, can you put it in the chat? Yes. Just because I can't seem to figure out how to chat with my screen share. Yeah, sometimes that can be problematic here. You just want the survey link? Mm hmm All right. The chat always hides at the top bar of the Zoom, and you have to kind of hover your mouse up at the top. It's really not ideal placement. And then it kind of it allows you, or somebody puts something in chat, you'll be able to see it. Yeah, or if, if you have two screens, you can always open Zoom back up on the other screen, and, and you'll be able to see the participants in the chat and have the share on the other screen. But I don't know if you have two screens, Bobby. Or maybe you already did it. Okay, yeah, now I figured it out. Now I had to know how to work my computer, so that's great. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to add a couple things there off of what Bobby was speaking, then you guys can dive into the survey there. But um, one is we're always going to be here to help with the facilitation. And I mean, I've facilitated a lot of these, and so I'm happy to jump in and help as needed. I'll probably be at 90% of them as it is anyways. Um, just. Jen and I are going to continue to be involved in that way and have a pulse and know what's going on and support uh, and Alyssa. So while we're handing it over to you, we're still there to, to help in that way. And I think the biggest thing is looking at what is, you know, maybe if Katrina's role isn't facilitating, what is that role, right? So I think that's part of today's discussion too, is looking at what do you feel comfortable doing? Uh, Katrina is a bit modest and humble because I know her, uh, her abilities, but um, whatever people feel comfortable doing, um, I think that's you know how you get towards those goals for the for the COP is important. But I'll let you guys get back to the to the survey. Okay, so if you have the survey link, we can take a look at that. But basically, it's um, does everyone tell me if you have a problem with the survey before I start talk, just talk, steamrolling you? With, okay. <laughs> Um, so I just asked first what COPs are in, right? Because some people are in, like, in, we have a lot of crossover. Um, and so this way we know what to kind of apply the responses that we get. And then just asking people what they're looking for. So I've seen the chemistry results and it was like resource sharing and the discussions. I remember, you know, like people will have what they need and we can use that to inform kind of what our work looks like moving forward. Um, and then if people are teaching in the summer to get a sense of where people are at. Um, this might only be my institution, but people just go dark for the summer, right? And so like, uh, I don't know if that's gonna be the case this year because we're in a much different situation, but we at least get a sense of what, what people's summer looks like. The, um, if they're gonna be online for the fall, if they're posting in the Canvas shell, if they're using the Canvas shell, what resources they would like. It sounds like lab, labs are the big, right? Everyone's, that's the part that's so hard to translate and maybe that's like crowdsourcing basically labs, but we can get some feedback and find out which topics people want more guidance on, which topics people feel like they're experts on, right? We can get that. Um, and then when are they most available? I have to fix this question right here. But when are they most available to participate? So we can kind of gauge, like if most people say it's the fall, then we can kind of like save some of our time, right? For So we can target that. And then anything else. And so is there anything else that we think we want to ask or anything we don't want to ask? How are you feeling? Good, not good. Okay. I, can I just say one thing that um, those that have been using kits or various other resources and doing a lot of online teaching have a lot of knowledge that that is not maybe really apparent 
for instance, you know, it's better to have all your assignments due on one day a week, or it's an option would be to do various other things. So I know those, those little tidbits of putting it in practice, executing these things, well, there are tips that you learn by doing um, that would be good to share as well. Okay. Um, one of the things I saw they had in the other was a, I thought I, a shared practices. So somebody, one of in the, I think it was chemistry, but I'm not sure. But one of the the faculty leads, so like what your roles are, sort of took that as their expertise, right? Developing shared practices on, so that it's like written up in a format where you can find it because if someone's not at the meeting, then they don't get the information too, right? So um getting it so it exists like long term um so i think that's really good that one and that's on there and i think you're right some of that stuff that you never think about that just makes your life like let's take out the low-hanging fruit and make those things easy and it's also good for students right because they can remember and set up the schedule and that's really important um okay so i if you want to save that link to the survey i'll also email it out um, I'm just writing myself a note, but we want to share that out, um, get that data back as soon as we can, right? So we can plan because that's going to be really useful for planning. Um, Suzanne, I'll probably add that sort of like, so it's clear as like a priority. Um, but I assume, I think that's something we probably are going to do right that's a good thing for you have all these minds together we should do that no matter what i think yeah i think that it's great to have the the cliff notes for a lot of these things that unfortunately you don't you have to learn the hard way and if there's anything that we can get people as far as best best practices or be sure and do this don't do that uh those are things that can be embedded into all of those categories i think yeah I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, not just like as a separate thing either, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you had to think, I'm going to put you all on the spot. You can put it in maybe in the chat if you want or say it either one, but what would you, what's the most important thing like in the transitioning role as we move forward, as we move from like damage control or whatever we're doing to um, like a vision, what's kind of the most important thing that you see or that matches your skill set? Katrina, do you want to tell me? I'll just call on you. <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, so I'm thinking there's a difference between that question, the question agenda setting and my skill set. So I'm thinking of both of those. Agenda setting to me means like what big takeaways are we going to be trying to work on as a group? And I think microbiology is kind of already like one of our top ones is as is all the science and thinking about what to do with lab. Is there some way that we can make it more, um, you know, something that students can actually participate in or, or what is really important about lab? Is it the fact that they can do a gram stain or is it the fact that they know what to do with the gram stain and how to interpret it once they see it? You know, like, so there's that trying to figure out things too. But, um, my skill set, I would think, um, I do have experience with online classes. And now, after several years of this and having taken some courses with course design, which is kind of like what Suzanne was saying, like sometimes just the way you have your course design can make it harder or easier on you. Like, you, know, you can save yourself a lot of grief you have a good course design where students know where to start and they're not all asking you questions about where I find this or you know you've got a good way of communicating with them so you're not getting 300 emails you know like just little things like that so I think those are skills that I could bring um, and like just organizing the material that's in that canvas course shell 
so that it's easy for people to find because you know a lot of people have contributed to the microbiology one. I haven't looked at the other ones yet. Um, I'm I've also taught anatomy and general micro and all that, but for right now my main emphasis is microbiology, so I haven't really looked at the other course yet. But um, making it easy for for us to find things that have been put in there or to locate things, you know, like get all the images and put them together in one place and get all the lab stuff, you know, ideas. If we end up, all of us trying to come up with an assignment that we can share, you know, where do we put those so that we're not hunting through the course shell to find them. So that's, I think, some place that I could help. Maybe if people don't mind me rearranging things and putting them in what order makes sense to me, <laughs> maybe that's not the best way to do it. No, I like that. I think that's going to be really important. People won't use any of these resources if they can't find them and they don't make sense and that, or, you know, so that's great. Okay. Um, Suzanne, critical work, what work do you think is the most critical and what's your, what's your skill set? Okay, so for me, the most critical for teaching microbiology would be definitely developing lab curriculum. Um, lab curriculum that fits this online experience and allows the students to learn techniques that are important, but also use, the, use critical thinking skills. I have taught this quarter with giving them data and it's been a pretty straightforward read in my opinion but they've really struggled with it and so finding ways to make it um make it more interactive or make it you know a, maybe break it down into more pieces i'm not sure and also to add some components i think it would be good for them to have plates in their hands and look at stuff on an auger plate so they have some perspective than just looking at images so my strength is going to be to develop curriculum i have lots of ideas and figure out ways to um, maybe perhaps put together some modules that highlight some of our objectives that we want to meet in microbiology labs. I'm new to online and it's been an I'm exhausted. <laughs> My brain hurts. <laughs> it's funny when you teach online too because it's like the first time is rough and then the second time is not as bad. It's like it's all it's iterative, right? And it's your stuff just gets so much better and then you see someone's class after they taught it online a bunch of times and you're like, how'd you ever do this? But don't worry, it wasn't great. It's never great at the beginning. It's just. Uh, and, and just logistics, like for instance, having a quiz launched in Canvas with images that I want them to see. And many, some have their internet's too slow, so they can't see the images. Or I just various, you know, the technology piece is consuming. Um, you know, triaging all the permutations of things that can happen in the first couple of weeks. That was the most anxiety provoking aspect of not having control over what may happen. And then I think I just got too exhausted. And I just, at this point, I'm like, oh, well, what's going to happen now? So um, I think learning those tidbits from Katrina will be really helpful and so that I can enjoy focusing on the other things that I like to do that are my strengths. That sounds good. Uh, Barchin, do you want to tell us sort of what you think is the most critical work and then what your what's your skill set? All right, so I agree with Katrina and Suzanne. The lab is the most critical for me as well. Uh, this quarter we're just uh, using, you know, Lapster and um, images for our unknown project. And it, it's okay, but it's not the same thing as holding a plate in your hand. Having said that, um, we've been thinking about the hands-on labs and there's a lot of liability associated with that. So I'm a little bit um, cautious, it's more than a little bit. I'm a lot cautious <laughs> as we approach to this. Um, yeah. 
yeah so that's where we are uh, what's my strength okay so i took a lot of uh, classes related to e-learning in my past and i haven't taught fully online classes but i taught um if a number of hybrid classes so one of my passions is related to e-learning and you know i think it's one of my strengths uh similar to katrina's um the course design canvas organization and uh, also i'm looking into uh, imp applying more of the transparent uh, transparency model, the tilt model. I think that's really good, Barton. Yeah, it's kind of that thing. It, so I'm getting from what we're all saying that probably one of our goals is going to be to develop some labs collaboratively, right? And and with sort of what you're saying, your expertise is like getting, you know, we can maybe build them into Canvas as modules and we could tilt them and that stuff could be consistent and then people can pull them. Um, and so I think so far we have a really nice mix of sort of skill sets and, and our, it seems like we're pretty aligned on what our critical work is going to be, especially for micro. That sounds like a nightmare, actually, but we will solve this problem together. Um, Bryce, do you want to tell us sort of what you think is most critical and what your skill set? Kind of are. Sure, yeah. Along with um, organizing things in Canvas, I think people want to know that the things that we put in there and prioritize and organize are vetted in some way. Because there's, um, you know, it's easy to have free or freely available resources, but sometimes if you're new to teaching a class, it's hard to know whether they are. I, you know how helpful they're going to be anyway so I, I guess that that's a priority to me in some ways as we organize the resources that we um i guess get to make some decisions about how good we think they are or how useful we think they are on a statewide um how widely applicable and then for a strength uh i think i'm good with facilitation i like facilitating meetings um online meetings i've been teaching online for a long time and um, I enjoy that part of it, especially if there's other people who are happy to do the organization and the, um, you know, setting up the canvas shell and getting all that thing, all those sort of things really in line. Uh, I'm really good with uh, facilitating things, meetings. That's great news, actually. I was like, man, nobody wants to facilitate anything. Um, no, that's good, that's good. We're well-rounded, we're well-rounded. Bryce, are you inside of a closet? Yes, I am. I set up a closet that I, is my little office because there's uh, my four kids plus six or eight of their cousins all running around. So it's good that I'm in this closet. It has good acoustics, actually. I, I like it. <laughs> um, Lisa, we're to you. If you want to tell us what you think is the most critical and what your skill set is. Um, so I'm I'm thinking about both the uh, our roles as facilitator or, or as leads or whatever within these groups, as well as our roles as teaching. And so, to, um, what, as I think more about the helping, you know, and I've been most involved with the botany group, but also somewhat in the majors biology and in the environmental science. Um, but um, what I, you know, I think. Probably my best skill set is the organization of the, of the canvas shell materials and, I, and I've seen um, as as things get added, it's great to see more stuff, but it gets a lot more um, difficult to, to navigate around the various resources. So I'm um, once I get a couple other projects um, behind me, I'm going to try to work on the botany um, canvas shell and get that one. Um, reorganized um, but uh, and so you know I, I'm an okay facilitator I'm not a natural at it but I'm okay at it and I'm happy to, to do it for a group but but um, you know the another role that I see for us is to um, encourage more people to get involved because you know when the when the quarter started 
there's some big meetings and everyone I've been in has been pretty small um, as time goes on. So I think uh, another, another role for us is to try to, to encourage more of our colleagues, you know, reach out to more people however we can. And then, you know, like in the last round, Jen and maybe others were like sending out emails saying, hope I'm gonna see you in a few minutes. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of participation people will wanna have over the summer. In the last botany meeting we had a couple of people that were, you know, or I think there were six of us there maybe, and two of them were like, really, I really wanna have these meetings through the summer. And, and so I know there's at least some interest. Um, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. I, I, I suspect scheduling the meetings will be more challenging in summer since people will be sort of distracted by a variety of other things too, not just our computers every day. Um, so I, hopefully that covered whatever you're looking for here. Yeah, do you, um, that was great. Do you, um, know what what do you kind of feel is the most critical like critical work you mentioned like recruitment I think that was a really good um, but you've been in some different groups so I'm interested to hear kind of we've heard a lot about micro I feel but like in botany because the labs are much different right you go They're very different yeah so spring quarter there are a lot of a lot of folks teach um, field botany plant ID outdoors uh, and and I mean, this is probably true for, for all the courses that people have had a variety of, of different, um, different rules when it comes to what students can do, whether the, they can get kits at all, whether they can even leave their houses. Um, at Centralia, I think we've got more flexibility than most places. And we're actually kind of preparing for hybrid courses where people who want to teach labs face-to-face -face, um, are, are planning on that, whether that actually happens or not. Um, remains to be seen, of course, uh, but, you know, I, I think Lewis County is smaller numbers um, with COVID, so I think we're moving a little faster. Um, and I'm, I'm really of, of two minds about that. You know, I've been doing environmental science online forever. I'm happy to do that, uh, to keep that all online, uh, and I want to put everything for one quarter online, but I'm doing majors biology in fall, and I know a lot of students want to be able to, to come face to face and and are opting out of college completely if it's only online um so i'm uh, you know as i approach fall i'm thinking about um you know I'm kind of doing double the work of having parallel um labs where i could be face to face with them or they could be online and I might, you know, say midway through the quarter, like we're all going online or uh, allow for some students to just do online work when other students are in the lab, um, which, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make this as accessible for to meet students' needs as possible. But it sounds like, you know, not just, not just developing a new set of labs, but um, it's kind of double the sets of labs so that they're, they're, um, comparable, compatible in some way. Um, you know, I don't want just, you know, I, I don't want to have like two, um, kind of a two-tiered system where the face-to-face -face students are getting better education. You know, I, that's, that's going to be really hard to avoid. Um, so that's, for the moment anyway, that's where my mind is in terms of, say, uh, critical planning. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, so I'm just going to summarize sort of where I think we are. So um, we, for facilitation, I'm going to send out a schedule so we can make sure. But Lucas, it sounds like there's more help than I thought. I thought we were on our own, but we have some, some facilitation, but we do need to probably work together to drive the agendas and making sure that someone's there. Um, so that, so that these are accomplishing whatever goals we have as a group, right? Um, so I'll send the sign up out, we'll try to get each of us at a meeting and then we can all, you know, make sure that someone's there and, and look at that. Um, I think the survey, getting the survey out and looking at those results is probably gonna be really important um, to help us decide. We're all on the page, it seem like it's labs. 
um, are the issue, which is not surprising, but it, it will be good to poll everybody and see too, because there, uh, there's also stuff that maybe we just haven't even thought of, right, as we move forward. Assessment's been a pretty common conversation across all the biology uh, COPs that, and mediums I've been in as well. Not that they don't have great ideas, and but it's, it's just a common conversation that comes up around what's the best practices with assessment online? Are we using honor lock? Are we not using honor lock? Are we doing short time quizzes? You know, all the things that, you know, are we doing non-traditional assessment? Are we getting creative? So there's all sorts of conversations that come up and I think we've seen a ton of things. So I think assessment's a, a definitely an area that uh, is one that people have had just a lot of conversation around. The other one would be student engagement that I've seen in terms of getting students to engage with each other, engage with the content. Um, and, the, and then again, that varies in each. The interesting thing with biology, right, is you have such a diverse difference amongst a lot of these courses, like depending on if the biology 100 course or the biology 160 course or botany or major biology or, or A&P, you're talking about different populations of students. Um, so it's a lot of these will vary based on that somewhat, but I know these have been conversations when I've been in the biology meetings because I I think I've been in every, yeah, I've been in all of them at some point, so uh, that's, they've been pretty common topics. Okay, that, that totally makes sense to me. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to add that to the survey too because there's nothing about assessment on there. Um, so I'll add those things that we talked about today, um, sort of the, the things that Suzanne mentioned and then the assessment and the student engagement so we can kind of get a, get a sense of where people are at and then we'll kind of know when they can participate and what we're looking at there. Um, and so those are kind of our two major things and then we'll probably need to meet again, I think after we get the survey back, but I don't, do you think we can turn that get people to turn that around relatively quickly. I don't even know if we have email lists. Maybe Lucas might know. Yeah, we have we have email lists for each one of the COPs. So if you want, um, Bobby, I can send that survey out for you, or at least, or if you want to send me the email and how everything looks, then I can just forward it to all those emails the first time, and then that'll give you a, kind of a, a list. But I'll share that document with with you, Bobby, that has all the different um, faculty lists for each CLP. And then, because we're working on as people join, you're making sure they get fit into that as well as add to the campus show. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so does anybody have, do you have anything else that you need to talk about? Do you feel like you know kind of how we're gonna move forward? How are you feeling? I do have a question. Um, is the intention for each of us to get assigned to one particular group or to float around amongst the groups? I think it's up to us. Lucas can correct me. <laughs> um, go ahead. No, yeah, I think, I think originally we just, what we did was we looked at the specific areas and tried to do it that way. It's okay, who's, who out of micro do we think would be good? And, and, and what we found was a lot of you have crossover, which makes sense, right? At community college biology, we all have to teach. You never know sometimes what you have to teach. So um, I think that however you want to organize that, that works best for your leadership team and makes the COPs more sustainable, then that's the way you should do it. Which, you know, so if someone feels more comfortable in a specific area, if others feel better about being able to kind of cross pollinate between micro and AMP and biology 160, that's fine. Um, I think just identifying, I think the next step for you all will be identifying those roles more specifically and saying who's doing what. And maybe that uh, document that Bobby's putting together can start to help identify that. So, okay, Katrina is going to do these things for micro and, and AP and Suzanne's going to do these things for, for micro and, and 160 or whatever those things look like. I'm just throwing out courses at this point. You, Katrina and Suzanne are the first two names on my on my video screen here. So those, they got picked on there. But um, I think that would, that's, you know, if that's the way you want to do it, then then do it. So whatever works for this group will be the way you should go about it. 
I, my opinion, which may not be correct, right? But um, I think it makes sense to have a person who's sort of the lead for each COP, just because then there's a, con a point of contact that remains consistent and that can be very helpful. And then we can fill in maybe who's gonna assist for things. So like that COPs, you know, they don't have to do everything for like assessment and labs and, you know, but they're just sort of like the point of contact um, for people and sort of like, that's more of like, get the names and the emails, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then we can decide, you know, if, if assessment and labs and best practices are sort of, you know, our thing, we can figure out who's going to help with those. And so, so we have one main person and maybe one or two people that help with some other components. And I can sort of build a table and we can kind of put our, I can fill in what I think based off what you said, and then you can go change it if you're like, mm -mm. Um, if that if that is easy, we can do it different too. If anyone has any strong feelings, I I'm not your boss or anything. I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> so. um, okay, so I will I'll get the survey to Lucas. I will send out the schedule to make sure we're all at that, and I'll kind of try to build um, a table of some roles and get us sort of like tentatively assigned. Um, and get that out to you. It will not be today, but it will be um, within the next couple of days. Um, if that is okay. If that's not okay, that's great. Just tell me and we can totally do something else. So, okay. All right. Um, so I'll work on that and get it out to you. In the meantime, um, feel free to let me know if you need anything um, or anything's happening or Lucas. I'm not really, <laughs> I would just ask Lucas probably, but. Um, but that way I kind of know, I'm just trying to help coordinate and keep things together, right? So, okay, does anyone have anything else that you feel like we need to talk about? We have nine minutes, which is like never happened in my life. I'm just curious after uh, what Lisa said as to just within this group, how many of your um, colleges have already made the decision for fall because Lower Columbia has already made the decision that ours are online for the fall. So that's what we're working towards. And we might have different goals if we think we're going to be back on campus for labs and we're just doing a hybrid thing, or if we think we're going to have to be online at least until winter quarter. So I was just curious as to what um, was going on just with you guys. We'll get that. I'm glad that's on the survey. That was a good question to put on there. Yeah, I can say for mine, because it, it's interesting, it's such a range. Like Pierce College is has already made the decision 100% online for fall. And then um, Clover Park has said in, at any point, if we can go in person, we're gonna do it. And then Bates is somewhere in between where they're kind of saying, yeah, we could do it in person, but it's, it's gonna be a big hassle to have people here on campus. So if it's, if it's just crucial and you have to have your lab in person, we could try to make it happen, but we'd prefer you just stay online. So for, for us, I, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> All right, uh, so for Lake Washington, uh, we are, um, all the prof tech programs, they are uh, going to be on campus because they have to have uh, their hands-on programs. And we're somewhere uh, in the lower priority to be hands-on and, and on campus. So if everything goes well, we will be on campus for uh, 200 level science classes. The, the 100 level science classes are online. Okay, I'll go next. At North, uh, the plan so far is to have campus um, open and offering face-to-face -face and our division uh, my dean has uh, allowed faculty to choose which they prefer and many of the biology faculty that are teaching you know the 100 all the way through the 200 level classes have chosen to go all online I just found that we have some some hidden face-to-face -face courses that we're going to be offering if it 
if they didn't go correctly this fall on LCC. So I actually have a shadow anatomy class now, which could be face to face if we're in the right spot in August. So, and I mainly did that for enrollment purposes. Uh, so just in case things open, continue, because Cal County has got a pretty good trend right now. We're small enough, headed in a good direction. But uh, if they open up, I added a face-to-face -face shadow course, so it's not out there right now, but it will be in, if it opens up. So just because I know Lisa said earlier, students are choosing not to go back to school, or they've just said, like, well, I'm just going to wait till fall and see if things get back to normal. And so I know, if, like, for summer at LCC, we're down 34% right now for summer enrollment compared to last year at this time. So I'm sure fall isn't going to look any better. And I'm sure a lot of colleges are, are sitting in that similar, you know, maybe not the same, but similar situation. So it'll be interesting too, as, as if things open up and shift, what will happen as August. I some people might be emailed and said, hey, do you mind if we shift this, this modality? Do you mind if we open the face-to-face? -face? So it'll be interesting, I think. There's, it's still very fluid, I think, because we're so, three months, you know, we're over three months away from the start of fall quarter and because of registration, we'll have to make decisions. But I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens as we get closer to August and what's going on with the, the virus. We're the same, it sounds like Suzanne, as your school, where it's sort of like you can pick, they told us to pick by division. Prof Tech is on, like Bartins, they're on campus already, um, but science classes are, I have some very optimistic colleagues who are holding out. They are convinced that we are going to be in person and I am not as optimistic. So I put my classes online just so that I could plan them well um, and offer them, but I'm not teaching a major bio or anything. You know, I have like non-majors and a um, genetic, like a 100 level genetics. So, but yeah, I, it's hard to say, right? There seems like there's a lot of, I don't know, an unknown, everyone's favorite. Um, okay, anything else anyone needs to talk about? Okay, I will send all this out. Does this time happen to work to meet to check in next week? Yes, okay, so I will send us an invite just to hold this spot for us so we can check in again um, and see where we're all at and plan, plan forward. Um, but otherwise, watch for that. I'll send you some emails, and if we can get all that laid out, then we can make a lot of progress by next week, I think. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you, Bobby, Bobby for Thanks. facilitating. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah, same. Thank uh, you. Thank you.